Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Just going to give a few seconds for everyone to join all of the attendees and then we'll get started. Good. All right. We will get started now. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. Thank you all for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters. So feel free to use the Q&A section at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, just to let you know. And this is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash BACS. And now I will turn it over to our first presenter. And we have Boston College up first. All right, there you go, Mary Beth. Thank you. As I unmute myself and say once again, uh, thank you and uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure to be uh, with you, although not in person, but to have this opportunity to chat a little bit with you and give you some introductions to some fabulous institutions here this evening. Um, so to kind of familiarize yourself with Boston College, I always like to, when talking with students, I love to talk about our location because I think that is something that is quite special about our campus. Um, we are situated right outside uh, the city of Boston. Our campus literally sits on the city line, but when you're at BC, it actually feels like you could be um, 30 miles away from the city center when in fact BC's campus is six miles from downtown Boston. So for our students, they really do benefit and take advantage of the resources that are in the city of Boston, um, but while still embracing a traditional college experience. And what I mean by that is living on campus. It's part of the tradition um, at, at BC. For our students, they tend to be quite intentional by nature. While they may not be able to articulate these points when they're 17 and 18 years of age and going through the, the college search process, Something about BC tends to resonate with them. And that is that feeling of, of being at a second home. Um, for where we talk about the living and learning experience in higher ed, BC really just by nature, um, because of our campus, um, it, it happens organically. And our students opt to live on campus most of their years at BC, except for maybe when they study abroad in, in their third year. We do see in fact that of our 9,400 undergraduates when we drill down to the campus residential experience that more than 90% of our seniors will choose to live on campus every year. And again, that says a lot about the students um, coming to BC and the experience that they're seeking. So we are considered to be a medium-sized university, and I did say university. Uh, we still have a, a feeling of a small liberal arts college, a primarily teaching college, where 100% of our faculty teach undergraduate students every year. That's a requirement at the university. But still, at the same time, we have the resources of a larger university um, when it comes to um, access to um, independent research grants being part of um, a faculty funded research program um, that can begin in your freshman year quite easily. And that's something that's really very much embedded um, to the BC experience is taking advantage of your resources from day one um, at, at the university. You'll also find that our students tend to be um, 
uh, more than uh, one dimensional. They definitely, um, when they talk about their interests, they often reflect on the duality of life at Boston College, and that may lead to two majors or a minor in addition to their major, taking advantage of study abroad options that I mentioned, research programs, as well as internships in the city of Boston. Because we have direct access to the city by literally walking across the street from our campus, you can take the public transit system called the T. We use one letter in Boston, we keep things really simple. Um, so that way you don't forget, but you can easily get from our campus to downtown Boston and return home um, throughout the, the week and of course on the weekends as well. The city of Boston um, welcomes nearly 200,000 college students every year. So when you hear that reference to Boston being America's college town, it really does speak to the vibrancy. While being a smaller city, we do um, offer a great deal of, like I said, those resources. Healthcare is the number one industry followed by finance. Tech and startup is number three. Education is number five for those of you keeping score at home. Um, so we do have a lot of institutions in the Boston area. And spe speaking specifically about the makeup of the university, our undergraduate students fall within um, four undergraduate colleges. And the largest is our College of Art, Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And we also have three pre-professional schools as you can see from this list. Now, what you may find interesting is that many of our students arrive as undecided, um, and that's just fine with us. We advise students to apply directly to the school that really speaks to their highest level of interest when, when they are as seniors in high school. And then from there, you can build out your portfolio. You could pursue a minor in another undergraduate school that piques your interest. You can double major if you would like to within your undergraduate college. But we really want you to explore the, not only the, the depth within your major or majors, but also also the breadth of the curriculum. There are over 1,600 courses offered every semester. As I like to say, no student will ever be able to exhaust the curriculum at BC. So we really want you to embrace that sense of academic freedom and autonomy. And then quickly, we are introducing two new majors um, this uh, coming year uh, for the 2021-22 the year, um, human-centered engineering and global public health. And this not only speaks to the eye that the university is taking when looking at higher education in the US and specifically for our undergraduate students, but speaks to our mission as one of 27 Catholic Jesuit institutions in the United States. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen there and leave plenty of time for my colleagues to share great information about their respective institutions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. All right, Zach from Connecticut College. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that now. And um, thanks for being here. My name is Zach Street, and I'm the director of West Coast Admission for Connecticut College. I'm going to begin with just a visual and verbal overview of the college. Connecticut College is a national, residential, national, Selective Liberal Arts College in New London, Connecticut. We have about 1,800 students who live and learn on the campus you see in front of you. That is a view of the southern end of our campus uh, that is right alongside the river. We have actually 750 acre Arboretum campus. It's the state of Connecticut and the Connecticut College Arboretum. We manage it. It's great for trees and trails and lakes and just really being immersed in a beautiful environment, but also great for study especially for our botany, environmental studies programs, things like that, because we basically have a laboratory all around our campus. Um, our ocean views, and you take that bridge um, one direction, you in two hours, you'll get to Boston, and in the other direction, two hours, you'll get to New York. So uh, I'll focus a little bit more on our location right here. As you can see on that map, we have a nice coastal location. You can see the water from campus, but um, also well situated to just experience a lot of the great things that New England has to offer, both the natural uh, beauty and the urban opportunities. Um, and the Four Seasons are beautiful on an Arboretum campus, that's for sure. 
Um, as a liberal arts college, we focus on small classes, dedicated faculty, research opportunities early on, and interdisciplinary learning, of course, is the heart of things. The chance to study a lot of different things, but also make connections across disciplines. And that really is not only a traditional focus for us, but an innovative one for us, because we recently took a reworking of a liberal arts education and launched our Connections curriculum, which is integrative education, as you see before you here, where we intentionally unite and entwine your major, your non-major courses, your study abroad, career activities, senior project, everything that you're doing that's part of your academic experience, we unite in our Connections curriculum. And the main way we do that is through our centers and pathways. For a few decades, we've had academic centers that are interdisciplinary, and they've been so successful that in uh, several years ago when we relaunched our curriculum, we sought to expand that with pathways. So we have nearly 20 centers and pathways when you put them together to choose from, which are broader themes, things like public health, entrepreneurship, creativity, social justice and sustainability. We have a new one this year called food. Um, and as you can see, these are broader themes that may not be appropriate for a major, but you may have many interests that come together in that theme. Um, so I think food is just a fun example. Um, you can maybe not a common major, but you can see how the biology of food, chemistry of food, e economics, sociology, uh, everything, you know, kind of can fit within there. Um, but some of those I mentioned, like entrepreneurship and social justice and sustainability are our most popular pathways and they really uh, create a great layering of your major as well as this broader theme um, and it can be an important part of your experience. Here are a few visual examples um, of real camels, uh, that's our mascot, um, and the major, minor, and center that or pathway that they are a part of. Something I encourage you to ask me about later um, after this session if you're considering Common College, it's a really special thing that we offer. Uh, another strength of the college is our career development program. We've got a lot of recognition for having a four-year career development program from your first week on campus. You'll be meeting with not only your academic advisor and staff and peer advisors, but a career advisor to help develop your skills and refine your direction and goals as you move through to put you in the best possible situation upon graduation. And I've got a lot of great alumni stories to tell that I'll, I'll skip for now. Um, we have pre-professional advising for medical school and all of that, but also guaranteed paid internships for all of our students. It's not required, but almost 90% of our students will, will do at least one internship as part of their four years at medical college. It's part of our day is our honor and how it strengthens our community. Our honor code is 99 years old. We're happy to celebrate 100 years next year. Um, and it's a commitment every student makes to hold themselves uh, to their highest integrity and accountability and, and sense of a person as, as part of the college community. And academic integrity is part of that. And it works to the level that our final exams are self-scheduled and unproctored, meaning, yes, we can trust our students to go take that chem final or that German final or whatever it may be uh, in an exam room without a faculty member present whenever they feel ready instead of it needing to be at 8.45 a.m. on Tuesday, like it is at, at most colleges. So that's a great symbol of trust and that pervades both the social and academic experience at Con. I'll just wrap things up with a few photos. Um, again, I love the seasons, especially spring um, and fall at Connecticut College. Um, and just a couple notes on admission. We are a common app test optional for more than 12 years. We meet 100% of demonstrated need for every student we accept. And we also have generous merit awards you would be considered for just by applying. Finally, as the director of West Coast Admission, you can reach out to me. I'm your West Coast Connection. I'm based out West, in fact, and would love to speak with you. Um, you can email me, follow me on Instagram at West Coast Camel for updates and photos of campus and schedule an interview with me your senior year um, as well. So. Uh, thanks for listening and look forward to your questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zach. All right. Our next presenter is from RPI. We have Daniel.
Hold on one second. I'm just going to put my slideshow going. Well, this decides to wake up, uh, hopefully it'll come on and get going soon. Um, but as we work, uh, my name is Daniel Paul. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at RPI. Uh, so RPI was founded in 1824 by Amos Eaton and Stephen Van Rensselaer. Uh, we're based in upstate New York, uh, so we're about two hours north of New York City, about the same distance away from Boston, and about two and a half hours south of Montreal as well. Uh, we're also about 15 minutes away from uh, Albany, New York, which is actually the capital of New York. Everybody thinks it's New York City, uh, but it is not. There we go. It's finally decided to load. Apologies about that. Uh, so the big focus of Rensselaer right from the outset was that hands-on learning, and that's something that continues today. Uh, we're very proud of our alumni contributions. I love our alumni have literally built much of America, everything from the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Fenway Park, uh, to first Apple store in New York City. We helped man land on the moon. George Lowe was the director of the lunar landing mission. Uh, later became our 14th president of RPI as well. As a pale Englishman, the active ingredient in sunscreen. I'm forever thankful for Howard Eisman for inventing that. And for better or for worse, the at symbol in your email as well. Uh, so a big impact throughout. But who are we now? We're around uh, 6,000 undergraduate students primary focus in the STEM realm. We have students joining us from all 50 states and around 17 different countries for undergrad. Once you factor in our graduate population of around 1,700 students, it's around 37 countries which are represented on campus. Uh, so why would that all one of the oldest technical schools in the world? We were the first school to offer a, a degree in engineering. So should you find yourself on jeopardy at any point, civil engineering was the first degree that we offered. Uh, we have now expanded from that. And we use the phrase the new polytechnic. So obviously everything within the STEM realm is evolving at such a rapid pace. We really want to make you intellectually agile. We want to teach you core competencies to adapt to that changing landscape. We don't want to teach you something which is going to be antiquated in five years upon graduation. Uh, so we approach this in a number of different ways. So we have five distinct schools at RPI. Uh, engineering is our largest school with around 50% of our student body. Uh, next up is the School of Science, which is also home to our largest major, which is computer science, so it's around 30%. And we also have a School of Architecture, a School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, and Lally School of Business Management. So when students come in, they can apply undeclared to Rensselaer as a whole. They just feel like something within the STEM realm is a good fit, but they're not quite sure where that fit might be. Uh, they can also apply to a specific school, so be that engineering or science, uh, but they're not sure which specific discipline. Normally those first three semesters, you get a chance to expose yourself to those different disciplines. Again, with the hands-on learning, that group work project as well. Uh, and then from there, you can really tell your own pathway. So for example, if you did take a major in engineering, all students are required to take 24 credits in humanities, arts and social sciences. But it's more humanities with a tech scientific twist. So if you're doing engineering, it could be something like sustainability studies. If you're doing something like computer science, it could be partnered with cognitive science, which is artificial intelligence. So you really have a unique intellectual synergy on campus where you can tell your education to where you'll see yourself as a good fit. And we try and give you that exposure as early on as we can. When we come to the hands-on learning, there's a number of different ways you can approach that. In the engineering department, uh, you have access to a centrifuge, so you're looking at how earthquake impacts different structures, large-scale manufacturing, wind tunnels if you're aeronautical engineering. All students are required to do a capstone project in their senior year. Uh, so it's a 15-week capstone project with industry leaders. They'll come with an issue they're trying to resolve. It's not something a faculty member's thought up the night before. Uh, over the 12-week time frame, you and your, your peers within different disciplines will try and come up with a resolution to the issue and then present it back to that company. So it really mimics what it'd be like once you do go into industry. So once you do graduate, you can really get the ground running. If it's more in the science realm, you have access to two of the most powerful supercomputers in the country. Uh, and then if it comes to more lab-based research, then we have CBIS, which is more lab-based research, and that's our largest on-campus research facility. Around 90% of our students, regardless of their major, will participate in research during their time with us. There's about 100 million set aside each year for undergraduate research. So being primarily focused on that undergrad, you do have a lot of opportunities you might not have elsewhere. Uh, many students are actually published prior to graduation too. So when you're going into that workforce or applying to different positions, 
having that research background is huge. Uh, another way we'll give you that exposure is through the ARCH. This is mandatory for all students coming in. So we arrange it so you can have an immersive experience pretty much halfway through your course of study in your junior year. So this could be a six to eight month co-op opportunity. Uh, so in your related field of industry, anywhere in the country, internationally, we have a career center on campus to assist with your application, assist with your resume writing, your interview skills. We have around 500 different companies come onto campus uh, to actively recruit students for this as well. Uh, and then you can do your semester away. So really putting some of that theory into a practical application, seeing if that specific discipline is where you see yourself in the future as well. And 90% of our students that do this will get a job offer prior to graduation. If you're more interested in research, you can use that time for extended research. I can also use it for an extended period away. We also have a large startup culture on campus as well, an on-campus business incubation center called the Severino Center. Uh, so many students actually start their own company when they're with us as well. We can use that time for that. This is just a sampling of some of the next steps where our students will go. Uh, upon the end of their graduation, around 85% of students will go into full-time employment. Uh, the return on investment is very strong for these students, very high uh, average starting salaries as well. And around 15% will go to graduate schools or professional schools as well. And then in terms of student life, we have 200 different clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, we have everything from zombie versus humans. Uh, we have the big outdoors club. We're in there three different wilderness areas. Uh, I am terrible at skiing, uh, but you're probably younger, more agile than I am. So we definitely recommend doing that. So we do extended trips away. Uh, there's a big rock climbing club and organization, a lot of gaming clubs. We have a formula racing team as well. Uh, so a multitude of different things you can get involved with. In terms of our location, like I mentioned, we're in Troy, which is the greater capital district region. There's about 18 different colleges and universities within the region. So it is a younger demographic. Uh, Troy itself is about a 10 minute walk from campus. We do have shuttle services which go through the night. Uh, you also do get a bus past the local network system as well. So if you want to head into Albany, which is about 10, 15 minutes away, you can go to those bigger concerts, museums and restaurants too. Uh, and then if you want to head down to New York City, we're about two and a half hour direct train ride from the Rensselaer station too. But in Troy itself, it's very much a walking city. It's kind of an old Brooklyn-esque. Uh, there's a farmer's market at the weekend. They have live concert uh, music down on the Hudson during the warmer months as well. Uh, Troy Pig Out, tons of cool things to get into. Uh, it's very easy to gain that freshman 15. Uh, we also have an ROTC program on campus, a flying club. Musically, we have everything aside from an a cappella group, so a lot of ways you can get involved. And then in terms of athletics, uh, we are D1 for men and women's high hockey. Uh, fun fact, our mascot is called Puck Man. It is literally a puck. Uh, I'd love for you to check out an image of that at some point. I'm not sure how they go to the restroom. Uh, we're also D3 for the remainder of those, but we also do have club level sports and then intramurals. So if you want to try ice hockey, but you're going to fall over like I do most of the time, you do have that opportunity as well. A uh, number of ways to connect with us. Uh, the Instagram page is a great starting point to give you a snapshot into student life when you can't visit campus as much right now. Uh, and then the RPI admissions YouTube page is a good way to get an insight into some of the previous webinars we've had. So if there's specific subject areas you want to learn more about, uh, definitely feel free to delve into that. And the final slide is Captain Reed Wiseman. He is at the International Space Station. Uh, I think it's pretty impressive. He took his RPI hockey shirt, uh, showing some of that pride. I'm sure the baggage allowance is pretty slim on that front, but he did a live Q&A a number of years ago with uh, a number of our students in our Performing Arts Center. Uh, but I'm going to wrap up uh, right now and pass it on to the next presenter. I appreciate your time. Excellent. Thank you so much, Daniel. And our next presenter is Kelsey from the University of Colorado Boulder. Great. Thanks so much, Peter. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey Livingston. I'm from University of Colorado Boulder or CU Boulder. I'm sure you may have heard it that way. Quickly, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area and I'm also a CU Boulder alum. So I think it's fun to kind of have that perspective uh, for you all tonight um, and now be in admissions, right? Um, so now a little bit about uh, CU Boulder. Um, we are a large public institution, um, about 28,000 undergraduate students. So of course, something to take into account, right? That we are a larger college um, and but I do want to point out, you know, that there is that 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio that you can see on the slide here. Um, and 85% of your classes will be 50 students or less. Yes, lecture halls do exist, you know, but keep in mind while you may have that lecture, you know, Monday, Wednesday, on Friday, you'll have a class with 20 of your peers where you'll have 
the chance to create small discussions, you know, study groups and ask questions that maybe you didn't get to in lecture. So that, that's kind of how we uh, mitigate those kind of lecture styles. So you still have that kind of personal experience in the classroom when you have those on your schedule. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the colleges that we have in just a moment, um, but we also have countless club organizations at CU Boulder, over 500, and of course, uh, a, a trend tonight, right, with student organizations. You can, of course, create your own when you come to campus as well. So here um, are, is just kind of a breakdown of the majors and minors that we have, um, you know, by numbers, right? I'm not going to list them all for you um, tonight, but this is just to show that you can curate your own kind of academic pathway at CU Boulder. It's very common for students to double major, to have a major and a minor kind of combination. Um, and so know that, you know, while you have to apply to CU Boulder and select a specific college and program, you are not held to that for your, you know, entire time at CU. It's very common for students to change their major. And then, like I said, um, you know, create an additional major or minor in that sense. I often get the question, you know, what is CU Boulder known for when it comes to academics? Well, we do have um, two nationally ranked colleges at our university, um, the College of Engineering, as well as Leeds School of Business. We're also a tier one research institution, which kind of plays into that. Um, but, you know, as you can see here, we, are, we have other academics to choose from. So you can truly kind of create your own pathway, like I kind of already mentioned. Um, one program I'm going to just highlight a little bit um, more tonight for you all is our program in exploratory studies, uh, just because I think it's unique to see you in the sense where it's a, pro a first year program um, for students to essentially explore their first year on campus. It's basically our undecided route for folks who just kind of want to figure out, you know, what they like, what their passions are their first year, um, or just really don't know yet. And both are totally okay. It just gives you a little bit more guidance your first year on campus. It does not add any more time through degree path, again, just gives you that extra support. Um, you can apply directly into this program um, through the Common App when you apply to CU Boulder, and it is also a second point of entry for our students. So, uh, you know, if you apply for your first choice major and perhaps it's a little more competitive, like our College of Engineering I mentioned, you will also be considered for program exploratory studies. So you're not putting all your eggs in one basket in that sense. Oops. All right, um, just speak, you know, talked a little bit about academics and now, you know, speaking to kind of what our students are doing and involvement on campus, talked a little bit about clubs already, um, but a great way that we create a home away from home for our first year students is requiring them to live on campus and have residential experiences, uh, meaning, you know, you have a class in your residence hall or residence halls are tailored to students of like interests like hiking or video gaming. Um, that's a great way for students to, again, create that home away from home. One of my favorite things about CU Boulder is how accessible campus is to the surrounding area. Uh, you know, we're about 30 miles from Denver um, and we're about 20 minutes from skiing, walking distance from hiking and restaurants. Um, and so there's a lot, there's a lot in Boulder, which is really cool. It is a college town and, and definitely a city in a lot of ways too. Um, and when you come to campus, you um, get a bus pass that is included in your tuition. And that is a great way for students to, you know, get to Denver, get to the ski slopes, get to the international Denver International Airport, which is especially great for our out-of-state students, right? Um, and while it's a beautiful day in this picture here of campus, it does snow, <laughs> something to consider, but we truly do get 300 days of sunshine. You know, there's a trend here that we're a very outdoorsy, outgoing community. So um, you'll definitely get your sunshine fix in Colorado still. You know, so how are our students, uh, you know, going into the workforce? How are they being successful? Um, just give you an idea of how successful our students are at getting jobs. Well, 92% of them are employed within six months of graduation. And you may be wondering, how are they quickly finding these connections? Well, um, we have a um, office on campus, Career Services, which is a resource students can use during their time as a student, as well as after they graduate, if they just need a little extra help and guidance after graduation, because once a buff, always a buff. So they're here, there to help you if you need that extra, uh, you know, guidance and help after you graduate as well. Here's just a, I think a fun slide just to show the uh, popular, if you will, companies that are employing some of our buffs. Um, the fun one to know is Google, which is of course related to the Bay Area, but also now Boulder is there's a campus in Boulder. And um, this just kind of just goes to show, you know, C Boulder degree can sure get you a local job if you want to stay in Colorado, but also, you know, can take you worldwide if you'd like to um, go um, outside of your kind of horizons as well. So how do you get to CU Boulder? We are completely located on the Common App. 
not going to go through all of the uh, check marks here, but we do participate in a holistic review, right? That's kind of a trend tonight too that you've been hearing. Um, and I will just point out on this slide that um, there's no guidance on test optional um, admissions yet for 2022. Uh, sorry about that. Be patient. It is a state of Colorado mandate, not CU Boulder. So hopefully to have more guidance this summer. Keep in touch, ask questions. I'm happy to chat with you more if you have it, have any questions or want to chat. Other ways to learn more about CU Boulder is to check out our spring uh, virtual visit experiences, learn more specifics about programs, or talk to our current students. That is all the time I have for tonight. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and I will pass it off to the next presenter. Thanks so much, everyone. Excellent. Thank you. And we have Kathleen from Lafayette College. Hey, Kathleen. Thank you. Let's get this rolling. Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen Williams from Lafayette College in Easton, Pennsylvania. Uh, so just so you know, when I've been in California, I have been asked, oh, are you in Lafayette, California? Nope, we're in Easton, Pennsylvania. You're looking at an aerial view of the campus. What you see are um, rivers, right? And so Lafayette, and Easton, both are surrounded by the Delaware and Lehigh River. So lots of outdoor activities in our area, just like there is in Boulder, with some great bike paths, running paths, et cetera. So Lafayette College, like who are we? So we now have established we're not in California, we're in Easton. We're named after the Marquis de Lafayette. Um, so certainly many of you may have heard about the Marquis from uh, Hamilton. So he was a man way ahead of his time, uh, an abolitionist, a suffragist, a man who defied his king because he believed in what the colonists were doing and came over and uh, and helped the a revolutionary, uh, helped in our revolutionary war. He became like a son to George Washington. Really cool. We have letters between George Washington and the Marquis in our library. But he was a man who really stood up for his convictions and his motto was Kernan, why not? And that, that still permeates our campus today. So our students are involved in so many different things. So we like to say that we're an applied liberal arts school. Well, what does that mean? That means our students are taking what they're learning in the classroom and they're applying it to the real world, whether they are doing externships or internships or community service, which is certainly not required at Lafayette, but students are so multi-talented and they are always trying to make this world a better place. They definitely give back. We have four divisions, engineering, the social sciences, the natural sciences, and the humanities. We've been doing engineering for over 150 years, so long before it was cool to be an engineer. Uh, and um, like our other majors, we do not admit um, engineers simply because they've put down they want engineering. We don't admit by major, we don't admit by division. We really truly believe that anybody who is accepted to Lafayette can do uh, at whatever he or she wants to do. Very common to double major, major minor, or in some instances, graduate with both a BA and a BS. We ask our engineers to declare by the end of their first year, everyone else to declare by their uh, end of their second year. Also, our engineers have the opportunity to study abroad in Bonn, Germany and Madrid, Spain at the second semester of their sophomore year. Our other students, the world is their oyster and over 60% of our students, both in engineering and in the school in general, will study abroad. We are an undergraduate college. That means no grad students, no teaching assistance. You will always be taught by professors. We have a student to faculty ratio of 10 to one. Um, and so your experience at Lafayette will be a little bit different from some other schools because the, all the opportunities will be yours and yours alone. All research, all, um, all teaching you know, is, is part, of, part of who we are. It's those relationships with professors. So 2,600 students, over 200 clubs and organizations, we are division one for sports, which also comes as a surprise to many. Um, we, if you were to Google football rivalries, the Lafayette Lehigh rivalry will come up. Lafayette and Lehigh have played each other more times than any two schools in the nation. They played their 150th game against one another in 2014 to a sold out crowd at Yankee Stadium in New York. Um, happy to report a Lafayette victory. Empire State Building was lit up on one side with Lafayette colors and on the other side with Lehigh colors. So if you like that big school spirit, um, know that you don't have to go to a big school to get it. So you don't have to be at Stanford or Cal, you, you could come to Lafayette and have that same sort of um, fun. 
scholarships. Yep, we have them. Full tuition and half tuition scholarships plus marquee awards that range from ten to twenty thousand dollars. We are an ROTC school, so um, Army ROTC scholarships available. Certainly, some of our Division One sports. We have twenty-three Division One sports have scholarships as well. We're also a school that meets one hundred percent of demonstrated financial need. So where is Easton exactly? Well, the closest airport for you to fly into uh, that would be a direct flight would be uh, Newark. So it's about an hour and five minutes from campus. Otherwise, you know, Lafayette um, and Easton itself is in the Lehigh Valley. The Lehigh Valley is home to 800,000 people. A lot, um, Easton has 30,000 people, but it is the third largest region in Pennsylvania. You're looking at an aerial view of downtown um, Easton, which I love. Uh, and so up here to orient you on the back hill is Lafayette College. There's a path that you can come down with some steps um, or take a shuttle when it's snowing because it does snow occasionally um, in the winter here. And that would put you right in front of our arts building, which is the brick building right here. Uh, that's where our film and media study students are theater students, our fine arts students take their classes. It's where our black box theater, our cinema, our radio and television stations are. It's a really nice facility. Uh, if you've ever picked up a crayon, you already are connected um, to, to Easton because Easton is home to the Crayola Crayon. Uh, and so the Crayola Factory, uh, which is a interactive place with uh, for kids of all ages is located in downtown Easton, but also the Crayola Factories are in Easton. That roundabout is home to the oldest farmer's market in the country, and our students certainly avail themselves of that on Saturday mornings. We have a great garlic festival in October, not as big as Gilroy's, uh, but still really fun. Bacon Fest, my favorite, the first weekend in November. Uh, if you're a foodie at all, um, you will not be disappointed. I moved from California nearly three years ago and I was worried about the food. Oh my gosh, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, so lots of really great restaurants in Easton, that's for sure. That is the picture of our downtown arts campus that you can see from the aerial view. So why might you come to Lafayette? Well, because you're gonna be um, gainfully employed afterwards. 97% of our students graduate um, and are gainfully employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. You will also be part of an, a vibrant community. 96% of our students live on campus all four years. If you aspire to go to medical school or to law school, know that our acceptance rates are really, really high. And frankly, for other PhD programs as well, I presented recently with the director of engineering and three of our amazing um, seniors who were talking about their research as part of the presentation. Two of those seniors had already been accepted to Stanford's PhD program, one in mechanical engineering and the other in chemical engineering. So while we're not a household name in the West, trust me when I say that companies and graduate programs know us. We also have the Dyer Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship where we have a lot of um, Shark Tank-like competitions and we bring in speakers of all sorts. We are a common application school. We do a holistic review. We um, are a school that will be test optional for the, at least the next two years. When um, reviewing your application, we definitely also consider demonstrated interest. So great that you're here tonight. Uh, and uh, we are a common app school with a regular decision and early decision deadlines. So that's how it works with us. We have lots and lots of things going on on campus. Right now, we have the ability to, uh, to have you on campus for tours. Our students are back, we had hope, and uh, believe we will be back to pre-pandemic um, school next, uh, next fall. So please come and visit us um, or connect with us virtually. Happy to talk to you, happy to put you in touch with any students, and we highly recommend interviews. So with that, I will turn it over to our last speaker, my friend, Marty, take it away. Perfect, thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> thank you, Kathleen, thank you, Peter, and thank you all for your participation and engagement. One more friendly reminder, our Q&A option is open. If you have any questions for all these great institutions, my great colleagues who've been sharing information, please don't be too bashful. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. And thanks to those of you who have put your questions in the chat. Uh, my name's Marty. I'm with Columbia College Chicago. And we may not be the Columbia that you think we are, but uh, let me start by uh, sharing a little bit about myself. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Uh, fun fact about me, I'm a musician. I'm a jazz drummer, so uh, maybe not quite a musician, but only a drummer. 
that's a joke, but uh, you are welcome to screenshot or grab any of this information uh, if you are interested. Columbia College Chicago, we are a creative arts institution. So all of our majors, all of our programs are really geared towards students who are interested in working in uh, working have as careers in, in the arts. We also are a liberal arts college, so much like my colleagues tonight, uh, all of our students do have a well-rounded experience, certainly out of our program, and all of our students do have classes in at least some business or marketing or entrepreneurship experiences. And so students choose Columbia for Chicago, the third largest city, the third largest media market, the third largest entertainment area, I suppose, in the country. But students also come uh, to collaborate with other students. We have 50 states represented in over 60 countries. And so differences are really what, what are in, uh, in, informing our work. Um, we teach with a hands-on and minds-on learning approach. So certainly students get into their creative interests right away or they continue them right away as they get to Columbia. And I hope that this just provides endless opportunities for networking and career preparation. Uh, we've got around 6,000, just over 6,000 undergrad graduate students. 60% um, of our incoming students last year self-identified as students of color and a quarter self-identified as first generation college students. So again, difference is really uh, prevalent in all areas of our institution. Currently, 99% of Columbia students are receiving aid. The sort of main creative and academic areas at the institution uh, fall into media and digital arts, visual arts, performing arts, music and sound, communication and writing, and business and management. Um, and again, the, the business and management programs are really geared towards the creative industries. You might be wondering what the most sort of popular programs for you Bay Area residents are. I think people definitely know us for our acting in our musical theater programs. Uh, we have both the BA and the BFA options, uh, but we also have a comedy writing and performance program, which is co-taught at the Second City in Chicago. Uh, one of our maybe more well-known alums, A.D. Bryant, is currently a cast member on Saturday Night Live, and she actually took part in the Second City program uh, in our comedy or in our theater program. We also attract many uh, budding filmmakers and, and even television makers and writers. So um, closely related are our game design, our animation programs, but really anything to do with the media and digital arts. Um, we typically attract those, those programs. Um, also our music programs. We have contemporary music programs uh, devoted to performance, uh, music business, recording and engineering, et cetera. I'll round out my list with uh, noting we have five photography majors at Columbia College Chicago, and I'm seeing a lot of students interested in things like photography, but pairing that with a double major in something like advertising or arts management. So again, we really, we really encourage that. Um, and last but not least, our journalism programs. People tend to know us for our journalism. So if you're an artist or really want to explore your creative careers, uh, check us out. You can find us on the Common App. We also have our own application. We always, like my colleagues, try to be holistic in our review. We practice what is a rolling admission timeline. So the application opens in August, kind of stays open the whole school year. We will be test-free for admission and for scholarship consideration beginning in 2022 uh, for fall 2022 admission. So we will not be considering test scores for admission or for scholarships. Uh, but we do consider students for scholarships once they've been admitted to Columbia. Um, and we encourage students to submit an audition or a portfolio. As you can imagine, those sort of guidelines and, and deadlines may vary from program to program. So if you have any questions, uh, please just give me a shout. Once again, it's Marty with Columbia College Chicago. I thank you so much for your time and your participation this evening. Uh, Got to give one quick plug. There's another great suite of sessions happening uh, on the hour. So if you've got the stamina, please go, go hear from some other great institutions who are participating in this year's Bay Area Case Studies. I'll turn it over to you, Peter. Uh all right, so thank you everyone. I invite all of our panelists to turn on their ca uh, cameras again. We have a, a couple minutes for a question here and I just uh, wanna ask you all a question so everyone can learn a little bit more about each of your schools. And uh, so what is one of your uh, favorite events or traditions on campus? And we'll start from the top. <laughs> Is that BC? Yeah, yeah, that's you. Okay, yep, that's okay. You. <laughs> sorry. sorry, I missed the, the last time around. Mm -hmm. um, so 
A favorite tradition, and we have many of them, but one to describe, I think, what comes out to celebrate the community incredibly well is, and, uh, and I would say without argument, our most highly anticipated event every spring is called ACL's Showdown. And that stands for our AHANA, our Students of Color Leadership Council. Um, and this is an annual dance competition that takes place in our basketball and hockey arena um, and outsells any other performance or event that happens uh, throughout the year, including football games. So I'm very proud of that. It's a dance competition that showcases um, our cultural uh, dance groups. And so you have every um, option of dance uh, at, on full display for the competition. And like I said, it's the most widely anticipated event um, every year on campus. Well, thank you, Mary Beth. All right, Zach? Yeah, on a similar vein, I think one of my favorite traditions is Floralio, which is a spring music festival where all of our campus bands and other musicians and performers, we have a very creative campus, uh, will play music, make music in the Arboretum and, and in the heart of campus. And there's just sort of a fun uh, music party atmosphere and it's in early May when the weather is great and it ends up sort of being a celebration of the academic year as well that is centered around the musical creativity of our students. And um, I don't know if it's happening this year. Uh, we are in-person instruction, so we have students on campus, uh, but we certainly uh, hope it's back on track fully in the coming years. Excellent. Daniel. So uh, some of the traditions we have is we have a giant staircase running from Rensselaer all the way down into the city of Troy. Uh, so the students arrive, uh, they're greeted by our president, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. She's a pretty impressive lady. She's the first African-American female to receive a, a PhD from MIT, uh, first African-American female to lead an institution such as Rensselaer as well. But she individually welcomes every student as they come up and walk up the steps. And as they graduate, she shakes their hand on the way out and, and kind of wishes them their, their best on their next step in their journey onwards. Great. Yeah, I think, yeah um, I, I'm just laughing to myself because I'm going to repeat what I said the other night so everyone already knows the, the cool CU tradition and it's that we have a live buffalo mascot um, and her name is Ralphie um, and this is our fifth um, buffalo mascot that we've actually had um, and it, you can actually be a Ralphie runner uh, and run with her during uh, before kickoff at football games and at halftime and it's actually a varsity sport which is pretty cool. Um, so that's kind of my fun little tidbit about CU. Pretty spirited, I like it a lot. So we have a live leopard on campus for the Lafayette leopards. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just had to say that because I, we, I'm following the Ralphie story for the second time. How do you top Ralphie, right? You tell <laughs> So we don't, um, but the, one of our favorite traditions of our students on campus, um, I, and I just uh, like the symmetry to it, there is um, a thousand nights before graduation, the first year students all get together for a semi-formal, it's really fun, it is just that first year class. And then four years later, a um, hundred nights before graduation, the same type of um, semi-formal dance happens. They go back to their first year residence, they reminisce, they wonder how did these four years go so fast? So the thousand nights, hundred nights dance is a really long-standing tradition at Lafayette and we don't have a leopard on campus, a real one anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Um, at Columbia College Chicago, of course, every day is full of deep dish pizza. Um, I'm only joking, uh, partially, but uh, believe it or not, our students are actually right now gearing up. Uh, we program what we call Manifest. It's a, an urban arts festival, uh, truly Columbia, truly authentic, but really represents all of the work that's been produced throughout the school year, kind of meant to showcase the graduating seniors, um, but certainly get eyes on what, what we're all about in the city. Um, it will be a mostly virtual experience this year, again, unfortunately, but um, we do typically normally close off the streets around our campus, hundreds of thousands of guests come check it out, um, local dignitaries, etc. So I'll drop a link in the chat if anybody wants to tune in. It happens in mid-May, and it's called Manifest. Perfect. All right. Well, that wraps up the time we have for today. So thank you to all of our panelists and to all of our attendees for joining us today. 
Uh, to our attendees, when you close your windows, uh, there will be a link that pops up with a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, also, this is uh, one of the many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other session recordings at strivescan.com slash BACS. Thank you everyone for joining us today and thank you again to all our presenters. Take care everyone.